Welcome to the Cranky Cameraman's Kitchen Table, available light. At least I've got out a quality microphone, so it sounds good. I didn't want this to be this like slick DP vlogger behind their studio desk showing off lighting. Uh, I think uh, all my viewers have caught on. That's not really my style. I want this to be more just what a day is like. And really for me, I just want to take you along on my work days and hope you learn some things from it. And in this case, I'm curious to get feedback from some of you out there that have been doing this for a few years because I'm open to changing and tuning how I do things. Uh, now, with that said, here's sort of the background on how I've settled on how I try to quote projects at this point in my career. I started working in television in high school. I used to work after school during football and basketball season for the regional cable provider and they had a channel that covered sports in New England. I worked out of the TV station that was in Massachusetts, Lawrence, Massachusetts, Continental Cable Vision is the name of the company. They're been, a, I think they got acquired a few times. I didn't even know what it's part of now. And I don't think that, I don't even know, I don't think that operation exists anymore, but at any rate, I get out of school. I drive about 30 minutes uh, from my high school in New Hampshire down to Lawrence, Massachusetts. I would clock in at the station and then ride in one of the company trucks to the venue for the night. So clock was running from when I got to the station. And then in later years, when I started freelancing in broadcast sports and TV news, it was the same model for freelancers where you're portal to portal. The idea is in this case, I'm providing all of my own gear and my own vehicle, but my day starts when I get in my work vehicle to commute to location for the day. Now it's a little bit different with production companies with kind of a lot of corporate communications and certainly in the commercial world, they uh, expect everyone to commute to location and that's when your day starts and it's fairly typical that you're on a 10 hour or a 12 hour rate on site. And when they're uh, kind of union contract projects or they're based off the union model, it's what they call a guarantee. So uh, you're working an eight hour day at your straight time, but most projects guarantee 10 hours of pay even if you only clock six or seven. Now that's on commercials, features, episodic TV. I don't, this is kind of getting out of my wheelhouse, but my understanding is you may only have an eight hour day and everyone kind of strives in that world for the 10 or the 12, because uh, hours nine and 10 are time and a half of your base rate. And then 11 and 12 are double time. So you get to, the magic sweet spot in that world is when you hit hour 16 in a work day, you've doubled your base pay. It's a two X payday. And I had many of those working in LA, but uh, now that I'm older, I got a family and I, I don't, I don't want the extra money in exchange for the loss of time and sleep deprivation. So a lot of this steers back to now I've evolved into this one man band set up and I do a lot of these shoots where I'm uh, doing interviews and B roll. I'm lighting it. I'm running the audio. I'm running one or two cameras. I'm offloading the footage. Uh, there's some prep involved. And then I'm usually landing at a FedEx and shipping drives that I had to purchase. So with all of that, I've tried to carry over what I learned in television, which is this portal model. And with, for many years when I was in California, I had my own office. And um, I would start the clock on whoever was driving production trucks and offside, I was one of them. Same thing, clock starts, they clock in when they get in the truck at the shop. Long-winded intro, my apologies. Let's move on to my rate card. So I keep this in notes on my Mac so I can pull it up on my phone or my MacBook and easily copy and paste it into an email. I also, or text message, and then I also have it as a draft in um, my email so I can just send an email off. I find that the phone rings with new business only when I'm on a shoot and the camera's rolling. So this is a good starting point for me. They're asking availability and what my rates are. And I can just kind of zip them a, an initial rate card where I don't have time or enough details yet to tune to an actual estimate. Now, top level, I charge a package rate, portal to portal. I'm not comfortable throwing my number that's effective uh, April 2023 out on the internet forever in perpetuity. I don't know. I just feel weird about it. So I ghosted that out for the sake of this demo. But uh, with that said, I, I send this number out and for new business, sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, you're way too expensive. This isn't gonna work. I'm so, you gotta find somebody else. You charge too much. And I've also had, I sent off estimates and people were like pleasantly surprised. They're like, wow, actually 
quite a bit lower than I was expecting. I came up with this number as my happy spot where I kind of figured out how many days I work on average per month and then backfilled what I need to run a profitable business, support my family, save for retirement, save for my son's educa college education, and, and then sort of range of uh, market rate and what general value is, and that's my number. And so I find that media companies, broadcast, traditional media, are very familiar with 10 hours portal to portal. This is what my mentors charge, people that started in the business freelancing late 70s through the 80s through the 90s. And that's just sort of how I was brought up. And again, this is like freelance news, freelance sports at the broadcast professional level. It's uh, owner operators doing corporate communications, industrial films. It seems like a lot of new people coming up weren't even aware of the portal pricing model. And that's kind of how it's disappeared. And I feel like a lot of production companies, agencies, entertainment companies, specifically in California, have really capitalized on like, no, you get to commute to the set on your own time. And then we want you for 10 or 12 hours on a, a flat rate. But again, like I'm driving a vehicle, a work truck, full of equipment that's already prepped. So my day starts when I, I get in the truck. Now, the first caveat I have on that is when I relocated to Texas, and I had this when I was in Los Angeles too, because I lived down in Orange County, but I would frequently have to work within the 30 mile zone in LA County as a local. But if there were a shoot like up county line north side of LA or Ventura, I would get the portal rate successfully to commute up there because it was outside the zone. Same with uh, going to East LA, I worked out in Palmdale a bunch and I could get my day on site reduced or get overtime starting sooner. And all of this is based on me driving an equipment truck, non-union production. So let's look at Texas for a moment. If you're not familiar with the massive state of Texas. So I'm based in San Antonio, which is in the Southern portion of the state, Southeast. And I play as a case by case local in Austin, the Dallas Fort Worth Metro, and Houston, and I'm listing those cities specifically because they're, they're major cities in Texas that have f fully established freelance production crew. There are many DP, owner-operator, shooters in those markets, so I'm not competitive to quote a new customer shooting in Austin on a portal rate driving in from San Antonio. Now, I'm on the north side of San Antonio, so my commute to Austin in non-peak traffic is 70 minutes, so totally manageable. Rush hour traffic, it's 90 minutes. Again, totally manageable. Coming as someone who worked in Southern California for many years, and I would drive up to three hours to, to go 35, 45 miles as a local. And same for Houston, I think it's about three and a half hour drive for me. Um, but I found with repeat business, my customers are, tend to be willing to compensate me for my drive time up to, up to Dallas, out to Houston. But if it's new business and I need to be competitive, I work as a local in these markets. And Dallas, I'll give you a few specific examples. So I've worked up in uh, Denton. We were up here, gosh, I don't know if it's Sherman, Gainesville, Valley View. I forget which, if it was the 75 or the 35, but... It was, I think I had like an hour, hour and a half drive outside of the city center. And in that case, I could portal, 10 hour portal from downtown Dallas, even though I came in from San Antonio and I came up the night before on my own time. I did uh, one job at a manufacturing plant for a agency out of New York City as a local. And I actually didn't even disclose that I was coming in from San Antonio, but on day one, they're like, wait a minute, you drove up. Oh, just bill me for your hotel. Like, don't, uh, don't worry about it. I didn't realize you were you know, paying for your own hotel room. But uh, anyway, a lot of stuff's one off one day stuff. So I just get myself there, get it, get it done. Now that's not everywhere, Texas. Like I said, that's just major cities that have established crews. So I've worked down in Corpus a couple times a year and I'm consistently am able to get my portal rate out of San Antonio. Typically, again, I, I get a travel rate in the night before plus mileage, and then I'll shoot if it's a one day, and then I just commute home. And I'll, I'll tend to give back the drive home after a shoot day. If it's not a, a long day with overtime, I don't charge for my drive time home, but I'll get the mileage. And then I've been working down in McAllen quite a bit, covering the border, but in addition to border coverage for news, I've had several corporate shoots down there and then another uh, television series, cable series. I shot uh, some segments for an episode in the Rio Grande Valley. And in all of those cases, McAllen's kind of considered 
a smaller market. Although as I work down there, I'm discovering that's like major, major city. It's similar to San Antonio or, um, yeah, I'd say similar to San Antonio, maybe Austin. And there's some excellent local freelance crew down there that are very capable. But every time I've worked in the Valley, everyone's traveled me in and been uh, aware and ready to pay for a hotel. So not going to push back on that. Same for Brownsville over here near the coast. Where is Brownsville right there? All right. So for my package rate, 10 hours, portal to portal, it's also a good hedge against the, I quote them a number and then they're like, well, we don't really need you there for eight hours on site. What's, uh, what's your half day rate? And I can kind of backfill and say, well, I'm already prepping all of the kit for your specific jobs, lenses, teching the camera. And uh, so I got a bunch of time that is not included in this billable rate. So my 10 hour portal is my minimum. I have a time and a half rate and then hours 13 plus or double time. Because I'm a one man band, I don't care who pays for lunch, but like it's part of the day. Cause I've found when I'm one man banding, usually at lunchtime, I'm like frantically restaging equipment. I'm backing up the morning's media. I'm rushing through my lunch. Clients are talking to me about the setups I want to do next. So I'm just like, you know what? Again, I, I reduced my rate a bit from a 10 hour on site to be portal based, but the clock is spinning through lunch. And like, I, I don't, I know some people want their hour to eat their hot meal. I, I just want to get home to my family. Like I, it's just like my time's more valuable now than billing a little bit of extra time. Um, I just want to get out of there. So it's like, yeah, the clock is spinning during lunch. And if that means I come back earlier than the rest of the crew and I start roughing in the next setup, I'm totally cool with that. I just want to get the heck out of there. But the clock starts when I get in my truck with the previous caveats I just covered. Uh, I'll give you one other little example aside here. So I worked on a corporate marketing project that was up in Longview, Texas, East Texas, Northeast, somewhere over here. Here, let's type it in. Long View, Texas. I came in from San Antonio, but again, this is not a major market. There isn't really crew there that I'm aware of to cover. I mean, we needed like Gaffer, Audio Tech, first AC to pull focus. I had a second cam op on that. And so they portaled everyone in from Dallas and it was based on the client's office downtown. So we got, uh, I think we got two hours of drive time. Might've been 90 minutes. Actually, I think it was 90 minutes. They were like the first 30 minutes from our office, we consider you local. And then after that, you, the clock is running. Come on. Yeah, hour and a half. So I think we got 90 minutes of our 10 hour day where the drive plus was able to build mileage on some of the vehicles we carpooled and stacked people into multi vehicles. So even though I had like a 355 mile commute from San Antonio, I drove up the night before and uh, stayed in my truck. I think I don't remember if I got a hotel or not. This was a little while back, but anyway, I was able to charge 62 and a half cents per mile for uh, 130 both ways, and then we all got some overtime plus uh, 90 minute drive time each way, portal portal, and. Same same kind of thing for me as, say, Corpus or, um, shoot, where is it? E, uh, the lake down here, Del Rio, Texas on the border. There's like no production footprint down there. But let's get back to my punch list here. So then I've got all my add-ons. Like a lot of shoots, I'll, uh, I don't have it listed on here, but I'll do a single microphone audio included. So if I get a one man band, single person interview, and I'm pretty firm on this, like you get one mic and I'm going to choose which is best case by case. Most times it's a boom on a stand for static interviews. And then if they're adamant about, I want a lob and a boom for redundancy, I've found I tend to make more mistakes. I get taxed saturated if I'm opping a camera, chasing focus, holding composition, managing batteries. And now I got to listen to two microphones. So I, I upcharge them. They want two mics. Got to throw me a little extra for the extra risk and responsibility. And being now in South Texas, I had to build up a proper pro location sound kit because there's just limited crew and availability in the sound role down here. So I've trained up a few people and I have some shoots that just can't afford a market rate location sound person. So it's more like I have an assistant and I've got the kit and sometimes I can't charge the, the kit fee but uh, I'm just doing it to get my package rate and the, the mixer bag is a better solution than direct patching. So 
that's my next exception is if I'm making the decision to add some gear on because it's going to make my life a little bit easier and it's somewhat invisible to the client. In those cases, I don't try to get an upcharge, but if they're asking for additional monitors or additional lensing, you, know, you get one, I give you one zoom lens with one camera for my package rate, additional cameras and lenses or primes or upcharges. I'm just starting to build out my E-mount autofocus kits. My red primes are long paid for and I'm using them less and less and should consider selling them. My 30 to 300 I have up for sale. I was shooting a lot of uh, pro sports with that in years past on the Amira. That's kind of gone away. The Bartek, that was a $7,500 wireless follow focus. And now I use my uh, Nucleus N, which I think I purchased it for like 125. So that thing's time to retire. Microforce, which is a Zoom servo controller. I'll get that uh, working when I have the 30 to 300 out on sports assignments lights again these I, I just update these as the market shifts and gear ages out like i used to be able to get about 325 for a gemini with a snap bag and now like i'm lucky to get 150 aperture 300 d's are new to me but seems to be kind of going rate with a bag is around 150 quad splits Always a nice add-on, multi-camera shoots. And if I got to do a zoom feed multi-camera, I can charge a quad split box and a zoom kit fee. Uh, the switcher, I've only used this a few times. I think my number's probably on the very high side. But uh, as I add kit to a shoot, depending on the scope and the budget and how many days I'm working, you know, I tend to start discounting or throwing some stuff in. And then here's my language. I used to be affiliated as a partner at a production company, marketing agency that I helped found. And we had a multi-page contract and deal memo for new business. And what I do is like one and done. And they're mostly one day shoots. And I have no post-production responsibility. I'm handing over footage at the end of the day and the job's closed for me. So I've simplified to a single page estimate. And this is this is my rate card, but same language is on my estimate. Initiation fee required to secure any shoot date. All activities build COD, copyright, released on full and timely payment. I'm a Texas corporation. I carry comprehensive insurance, including workers' comp. All right, this video is running a little long. I wanted to get into the QuickBooks side. I've been using QuickBooks since 1998, and in my current business, uh, it goes back to 2006. I've got data all my invoices sent out, all the equipment rentals itemized so I can run reports and trends. I can tell you how much revenue by quarter, by year, by lifespan, my Amira A and Amira B have returned. Same for my other items. Uh, it's good useful data just to kind of study the business and see trends and also determine when it's time to get rid of stuff that's just sitting on the shelf. I used to sell a camera when the rentals per quarter or less than the rate at which the camera's depreciating in value. So like C300s, I kept them all the way to the end. Mark 1s, I think they're worth like, I don't even know, 1000 bucks maybe, $800 now. But if I get like one $350, $300 rental corporate event or something a year on those things, they're just good additional cameras for me. So they have more value for me to keep them on the shelf than to go get a quick uh, 1000 bucks by selling it. All right, let's continue the discussion in the comments below. I'd like to hear how you manage pricing, package rate. Are you able to do the portal thing? Did you come up in traditional broadcast where portal is the norm? If you haven't, I encourage you to consider it for cases where you're working out in uh, kind of secondary areas or long drives. Got to charge for your time and try to get that mileage as well. All right, see you on the next one.